Reese here with 3D Fly. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to build the 3D Fly Bracer. Now, if you haven't seen a fly video for this airplane, I highly recommend you take a look at the link in the description down below. We designed this plane off of a pylon racer platform, so look forward to have a great top speed, yet be highly maneuverable, with generous moments and a clipped wing leading to great pitch and roll rates. Let's go ahead and gather our materials and get started with the build. In this section of the video, we're going to show you how to assemble your wing segments, add your sliders, and add your catch for assembly with the fuselage. Start by removing any raft from the segments you have printed, and clean up the bottom of the segment with an X-Acto blade. Then take your wing segment, and apply glue to the outer skin and the support structure in between. Now when gluing these parts together, we like to hold the parts vertically, and let gravity pull the glue down into the joint. This creates a really nice strong bond. Apply some accelerator, and if you have a little excess glue, you can wipe it free with a paper towel. One really important item to keep in mind while gluing these parts together is to avoid any adding any undesired angle in between each segment. A crooked wing will make a plane fly crooked, so do your best to avoid that. It's really easy to avoid, you just have to pay attention. Finish up by adding your sliders and your catch to the wing. Just add a little glue and hit it with accelerator. In this section of the video, we're going to show you how to assemble the fuselage and the horizontal stabilizer. Similar to how the wing segments were assembled earlier, assemble your fuselage segments. On the forwardmost segments of the fuselage, you may want to avoid gluing the innermost section of the support structure since the motor mount slides through this area and any excess glue may make it difficult for the mount to slide in. When you reach the tail end of the fuselage, do your best to avoid plugging the tubes that the control rods slide through. When you reach the horizontal stabilizer, Make sure you align everything correctly and everything is nice and square because we didn't give you any alignment aids with the design of these parts but it isn't highly critical that the parts are perfectly square as the horizontal stabilizer won't give you any um, nasty yawing moments. Just do your best. Lastly, cut your holes for your battery hatch and your wing servo leads. You will find recessed areas that make the cut lines for these cut. We prefer to use a spare tip on our soldering iron to make these cuts as the hot tip melts the layers together and keeps them from separating. You can use an X-Acto blade to, as well to make this cut, you just lose that benefit. When you get to the wing servo lead area, do your best to avoid cutting the support structure that runs through the part. As it does add some strength, it isn't super critical if you do cut it because you can always go back and glue it.
this section of the video, we're going to show you how to glue together your aileron segments and attach them to the wing using CA hinge. Start by cutting CA hinge into strips that are 0.2 inches by 0.6 inches. Then glue your aileron segments together, and it's best to do an alignment check with the CA hinges temporarily in their slots before you go ahead and glue them into place. It only takes a dab of glue at the end of a CA hinge, so apply glue sparingly, or the excess glue in between the wing and the control surfaces could make it difficult to move the control surface. In this section of the video, we're going to show you how to glue together your elevator and rudder segments and attach them to the airframe using CA hinge. Start by cutting CA hinge material into strips that are 0.2 inches by 0.6 inches. Then you can glue your rudder and elevator segments together. Your elevator then glues into the fuselage prior to your rudder, but make sure that you do an alignment check of your CA hinges prior to gluing them. Once your elevator is in place, glue your rudder or CA hinges into place and install your rudder. You may have to trim the bottom CA hinge slightly because there is a small, smaller receiving slot. In this section of the video, we're going to show you how to install the control rods and servos that move your ailerons. Start by making sure your servo arms are pointed in the opposite direction and that they're installed in a neutral position. We recommend using a servo tester while installing your servo arms to make sure that they are installed neutral so you won't have to trim them significantly later. When installing your servos, you may have to add a servo extension based on which servo you purchase. Install the servos by using control rod material to fish your servo leads through the paths designed into the wing. Clip the appendages on the side of the servo and press them into the recessed pockets. With the servos in the correct place, you can add control rods. Place a Z-bend at the front and rear of the control rod, making sure to keep your spacing correct from the control arm to the control horn. With your control rods in place, you can glue down your servos. You have a little bit of micro adjustment there, so we recommend you go ahead and use it. Only use a little bit of glue when gluing down your servos because then it makes it easier if you have to cut out a busted servo.
this section of the video, I'm going to show you how to install the servos and control rods for your elevator and your rudder. Start by making sure your servo control arms are pointed opposite directions of each other and that you are using a servo tester to keep your servo arms neutral. Make sure your servo arms are pointed out and the servo leads are pointed towards the tail of the aircraft. Those will wrap around and plug into your receiver later. Then you can fish your servo lead through the support structure and press your servo down into its receiving area. Then grab some control rod material and feed it up through the tubes designed in the fuselage and use a Z-bend to secure your control arm down. Lastly, add some bends to secure your control rod to your elevator and your rudder. In this section of the video, we're going to show you how to assemble the battery hatch and get it latching down correctly to the fuselage using magnets. You're going to start by gluing the two segments of the battery hatch together and hitting it with some accelerator. If there's some excess glue, you can go ahead and wipe it free with a paper towel after applying some accelerator. Next, you can glue the magnet into the battery hatch by adding a dab of glue in the recessed pocket for the magnet and applying some accelerator. Now when gluing your magnet into the fuselage, we recommend that you double check or triple check the orientation of your magnet before gluing it in. Do this by letting the magnets attract themselves together, then pulling it off in the same orientation that there's attraction. If you get the polarity wrong, you may have to go ahead and reprint your battery hatch. In this section of the video, we're going to show you how the wing assembles with the fuselage. For assembly of the wing onto the fuselage, we really like these self-tapping screws because they allow you to remove the wing for transport. Just do your best to avoid stripping these bosses by only tightening the screws to the point that they bottom out or just slightly tighter than that. Any more torque and they may strip. Start by creating entry holes for the self-tapping screws 
that will hold the wing to the fuselage. If your fuselage is not printed in clear material, you can locate the design in bosses by holding the fuselage up to a light and it becomes pretty clear where the bosses are. To open up the holes, we like to use a soldering iron because it melts the layers together, creating a really strong boss. Just avoid opening the holes too much as it may make the bosses strip easier. We recommend that you start small and open them up if you have to. You can also drill these holes. We recommend you use a 3 30 seconds drill bit if you go that route. Once you have opened up the holes, we recommend that you fit test the self-tapping screws prior to the wing assembly. Then just feed your servo leads up through the fuselage and screw down your wing. In this section of the video, we're going to show you how to mount your motor, install it in the fuselage, and get your ESC hooked up to the motor leads. Start with your motor and your motor mount. You're going to want to avoid installing a propeller and spinner until just before your main flight. Apply a thin layer of glue to the front of the mount, motor mount and the area where the motor screws meet the back of the mount. The glue creates a layer of insulation so that in the case your motor does get warm, it helps prevent the mount from melting. Just make sure to keep the glue out of the holes for the screws and avoid thick and thin sections as this may adjust the motor thrust angle. Next you want to align your motor mount correctly and screw the mount to the back of the motor. If you align the motor so that one of the three side screw bosses are pointing upward and the leads from your motor are rotated 45 degrees from that, it makes the connection to the ESC much easier. Open up the motor mount boss holes either with a soldering iron or an exacto blade before sliding in your mount. With the mount in, you can screw the self tapping screws in through the motor mount bosses you opened up and they keep the motor nice and secure during flight. Then you can locate your motor leads and connect your ESC. You may have to swap the connectors to get the motor rotating in the correct direction.
this section of the video, we're going to show you how to assemble your spinner and propeller onto your motor. Now one thing you might keep in mind is you never want to install a propeller onto a plane until just before your main flight. It's a huge safety concern and we wouldn't want anyone getting hurt accidentally while building their plane. Start by sliding the rear half of your spinner and your propeller over your motor shaft. Then tighten your propeller nut to secure down your propeller. We've added cutouts on the rear half of the spinner so that you, have, you can have pliers grab the motor and keep it from spinning during tightening. If you aren't able to keep your spinner and propeller perfectly straight while tightening, don't worry, you can usually twist them a bit after tightening. Just make sure this doesn't loosen up your nut. With the prop tightened down and oriented correctly, you can add the forward half of your spinner and tighten down with self-tapping screws. Now since we don't want the prop assembled until just before our main flight, we're going to disassemble this until just after our pre-flight checks. In this section of the video, we're going to go over pre-flight considerations. First thing you're going to want to do is make sure that your channels are all set up correctly. Stick input of right roll should cause the right aileron to come up and the left aileron to go down. Stick input of left roll should cause the left aileron to come up and the right aileron to go down. Stick input of pitch up should cause the elevator to lift up and stick input of pitch down should cause the elevator to move down. Stick input of right rudder should cause the rudder to swing to the right, and stick input of left rudder should cause the rudder to swing to the left. Lastly, make sure that your motor spins in the correct direction. Looking at the front of the plane, the motor should spin counterclockwise. Once your channels are set up correctly, you want to neutralize all your control surfaces using sub trim. Then you can adjust your throws up and down as needed. For the correct throw distance, take a look at the instruction manual. You can check the throw distance with calipers or a ruler. Finish up by checking your balance. There are balance markers located on the wing. Place your fingers on these balance markers and the plane should balance slightly nose down. Lastly, make sure your motor is spinning in the correct direction and creating forward thrust prior to going for your maiden flight. Hey, just finishing up here. If you like what we're doing here, please go ahead and subscribe to our channel. Try and place an emblem right about here.
Now, if you're into RC flying and you've been thinking about getting a 3D printer, I highly recommend you go ahead and pull the trigger. It's a really useful tool. It's one of the best ways we found to just go ahead and create. If you have a 3D printer and you've been thinking about getting into the RC hobby, I uh, recommend that you go ahead and do it. It's a really great hobby. You have a great time going out to the airfield. It's a really great way to meet people. Lastly, uh, what I want to leave you with is please don't pass on these files. It takes a lot of time and effort to go and create these planes. And your support is really what keeps us going. Uh, makes it so that we can bring more of these planes to you. If instead of passing on files, you can go and pass on the word to your friends, that would be awesome. Till next time.